receive complaints uh, often through phone calls from, from the public. We also can take complaints on our website. And uh, once we receive those complaints, they're assigned to an inspector who will go out and, and visit the site to see if there is indeed uh, a violation. Uh, if we find a violation there, whether it be high grass or uh, parking on the grass or junk cars, whatever the case may be, uh, the inspector will, will do one of two things. He will either uh, leave a door hanger, which looks a lot like this. Uh, we fill out whatever the problem is. We leave a copy of this uh, on the doorknob if the homeowner is not home. Um, and that lets them know that we've been out and there's, there is a uh, whatever violation there may be. Uh, the other alternative that the inspector might take is to just go ahead and send that homeowner a, um, a certified letter uh, through the mail service and uh, it looks a, a lot like that. The homeowner will receive one of these two notices. Um, in it, they'll be notified that they have 10 days once they receive the notice to bring it into compliance. Uh, hopefully, and in most cases, that's, that's how the problem is resolved. If the homeowner or uh, home property owner does not resolve the problem in that prescribed amount of time, we have no choice at that point to either uh, cite them to court or, in the case of high grass, to send a, a mowing crew out and actually do the mowing uh, through a contractor. If we go out there, for just say for instance, on the first of the month, um, and we find that the grass is 12 inches or more, which is what the ordinance specifies, um, then we will send a letter, assuming that uh, the letter goes out the next day, um, and assuming that it gets delivered right away, uh, you're looking at really the 15th of the month at best uh, before we can take that next step, which is either send a mowing crew out or to cite them to court. Um, in the meantime, of course, that grass that was 12 inches on the first of the month is now significantly higher. And it's not that we have not taken action. We just have to wait for the uh, legal process that we're required to take to, to, uh, to work through. We take at least 20 complaints a week, I'd say. Of course, the inspectors that, that deal with these problems, not only do they deal with the complaints, they're also dealing with whatever else they happen to see while they're out traveling. So, so some of them are, are picked up on our own. We do have people that call in and, and complain, I, I, I'm, I just got a citation to court. No, this is not a citation. This is just a reminder that you have uh, a problem that needs addressing. Uh, no official process has really begun. Um, the official process begins when you would receive a, a certified, excuse me, a letter in the certified mail uh, similar to this. That does begin that 10 day process and, and that's when uh, the clock does start ticking and we have to take action uh, as soon as that, that 10 day period has lapsed. Certainly this time of year it's high grass. Uh, it's not uncommon for people's grass to get out of control a little bit simply because um, we've had a lot of rain lately and uh, it, it, it will grow fast, especially when people are out of town on vacations. They go, you know, um, maybe it needed, uh, it almost needed mowing before they left and went on a 10 day, two week trip and by the time they get back it's, it's crazy. So certainly high grass is, is the biggest thing and, and just so the public knows, uh, our ordinance does require that the grass be kept no less than 12 inches to stay uh, inside good graces of the ordinance. Uh, another one is uh, parking on the grass. We have an ordinance that, uh, that does not allow anyone to park on the grass. And, and while some people may not realize uh, or appreciate the, the benefit of that, the, the problem with people parking in, the, in their yards is that the yards get muddy and then when they do that, it, the mud gets dragged out onto the street and that, that is a problem for our storm water. So um, that, that's the reason for that. Um, and then we also have another ordinance that, that we, kinda, we deal with from time to time which is uh, the quantity of vehicles on a particular uh, lot. Uh, the short answer is five vehicles is the most that you can have on a, on a residential lot and um, that does include boats, 
um, campers and so forth. So, it, and you know, it, it's not uncommon to see someone that has, a, you know, a mother and a father and two or three teenage kids, and it's it's easy to get more than than five vehicles. So that can be a struggle sometimes too.